So today we're going to be top dotting this mandala rock. And hopefully I don't knock over the camera when I'm trying to scoop myself up. Oh. Alright. Hello fellow daughters. So we will be using these acrylic tools that I have modified and bent so you can have a better angle at the camera view as I dot. So and they are labeled, each one has a different size. It goes from one to I believe eight, no, ten. It goes from one to ten. And as I use the tools I will be putting down the numbers so you can see which tool I'm using. And then we have this wonderful set from Mark's Mandalas right here. As you can see, they're well used. <laughs> and I will also be laying down numbers as they are numbered from end to end. And you will know which tool I'm using at the time. And we are using these three colors. We are using Folk Art Baby Pink, Folk Art Bright Pink, and Folk Art Lavender. And then when we're all done, but that's not going to be in this video because we have to wait for those dots to dry, we will go back and put a top coat over the entire rock and that will help hide any blemishes that you might have in your artwork but it will also give a nice shimmer and effect to the top of the rock and that was Enchanted by Deco Art Magenta alright so let's get started we're gonna start here with this purple and we're going to be using the number Eight tool by Marks Mandalas. So there's our eight. And there's our eight, and there's our purple. So you just want to dip it until you get a nice little buildup on the end of that. And then you're going to lay it right in the center of the pink dot. Alright. You always want to make sure you have a towel around to wipe off your tool. And you can just simply wipe it off and clear the end. Okay, so now we're going to stay with the purple, the lavender, and we're going to use the number one tool of the acrylics and these are just a Amazon brand that I found and it came with um, a couple mandalas, um, some paint trays, some stencils, and some larger pieces of acrylic that are like these. This is the rest of the set. But we won't be using these today. Alright, so we're going to start with the number one tool and we're going to get our ball covered in purple. And we're just going to start laying some top dots on those and you want to reload your tool every time you lay down a dot 
otherwise they won't be quite as uniform. don't really like the crinkling of the paper underneath me, so I might need to figure that out. I'm trying not to lean against it too much, but sometimes it's kind of hard. So I apologize in advance. I can wipe off your tool. Now you're going to go to the number two, which is at the opposite end of the number one. And you just turn it over, dot your tool, make sure it's covered, and go to your next row of dots. That one didn't lay very good, so I'm going to cover it. And continue to go around. See, I didn't like the way that one laid down, so we're going to use a pointy Q-tip. This is how you get rid of mistakes, is you kind of just roll the Q-tip over it. And if it was a bigger dot, we might have to roll the Q-tip over it and then dip the other end in a little bit of water and wash it off. But oh, we were okay this time. Your tool. Now we're going to go to the number three acrylic, which I believe is this one. Actually, no, I want to go to the number four. Now I think I want to go to a number six. Seems to be working out in the even numbers. Staying with purple. The number six is the white tool, I believe. It is. It's a little bit bigger of a ball. Load her up. Some people can make these dots with a small brush and they can do different 
consistencies of a dot and diameters of the dot and I'm just totally amazed how they can do this with just a brush and not these tools. You gotta be careful not to put your hands in your dots too. The dry ones are okay, but putting them down in the wet ones, that's, that's a no-no. <laughs> All right, so we get to switch colors. Now we're gonna go with, since these are um, the darker pink, we're gonna go with the lighter pink on top of those. And we just finished with the number six. But I think we're going to go back down to a four because these dots are kind of small. gives your piece so much more depth when you put top dots on your pieces. You can go even further and put third and fourth if you'd like. Sometimes you could get overcrowded, but I guess the bigger dot that you go, the bigger the size you go, the more dots you can put on top of it. Because you always kind of want to go a tad bit smaller than the dot before. And we went ahead and went out to the second row and we're staying on the number four tool. Because it seems to be working. And you will get faster as you go. the number six. We're going to stay with the number six and go back around one more time.
hard not to lean on that paper. We're going to switch over to the Marks Mandala tools. And let me see what we got going on here. So this is a seven. I think the seven would be okay. That's the wrong dot. Let's see, learn from your mistakes. Roll it off. See how I mean that this is a bigger dot? See, it just gets you a little, like, little. This is a jelly jar. I put water in it, I dip my q tip in it, and I just wash it off. Happy dot, good no more. <laughs> Be one with the thing like Bob Ross says. It's all okay. Alright, so that may be, seven may be a little bit too big for that dot. I measured the wrong dot earlier, so we're going to go back down to a six in Mark Sandalit's tools. This is your six. It's going to go on this pink dot. So let's see now. Pink dot. Let's try that again. Yeah, that's probably okay. As you can see, it's already given it some pretty cool geometric designs. So now we're done with the light pink. We're going to switch over to the bright pink. And we just did a number six on that. I think we're going to go to the number seven now in Mark's Mandala's tools. This one. Load up your tool. And you want it to where the paint doesn't pull away from itself.
fix that noise on the spinner. Can't. Don't like that. That's not very relaxing. I forgot one. show you all really something really cool at the end. Okay, now we're going to go up to a number 8, but I want to redo this dot right here with the number 7 because it looks kind of icky. I think I hear my kitties being very mischievous, so I can't wait to see what I find. If any of y'all have any kitties, you know what I'm talking about. And you'll kind of notice when you don't put a dot down right, it's pretty obvious that you have to go back over it. You kind of just get a feel for things after a while. As with everything, practice makes perfect. This rock is not perfect by any means. There is flaws in it. We're going to stick with the number 8 and go another row. Remember, don't put your finger in your paints that you've already laid down. It's still wet. Now, see, you can see that that one is not perfect. I'll bring it up so you can see it. See how it's kind of clippy there in the middle? You just want to go back over it until you can get it to where it's not like that. It's really easy to lose your eye in some of these pieces as the more geometric the shape gets, the easier it is to lose your eyes in it, the piece itself. So you often find yourself you have to come back and refocus in a lot of the geometrical shapes because it's easy for the eye to get lost in the maze. Okay, we are going to add a little bit more bright pink to this cup. 
and stir it and see if that does it. Uh oh, I missed the cup. Help this just a little bit. And I all know as artists, we often get ourselves very dirty. But it all washes off. That's the beauty of acrylic paint. <laughs> so we're going to stir it. I don't add anything to these paints. I don't know if anybody out there adds anything to their dotting paints. Let me know. Let me know how it works for you. Does it make the bubble more fluid? Does it the bubble go out more where it doesn't sink in? Does it not peak as well? I'd like to know these things. All right. Now we're going to number nine, which is a lot requires a lot more paint. Oh, let me put my numbers are wanting to escape me. And we will do this two times. So we're just going to go ahead and fill in the bottom rows as we go along. And this will be our last dot until we meet again. So adding more paint and stirring it did help it a little bit. It's probably just getting too low and needed refreshed, as we often need in life. A good stir and a refreshment. So that concludes our dot session for today, top dotting. And I, as promised, I was going to show you one last thing in the end that I thought that everybody would enjoy. I need to back up. And we're going to turn the light off. We're going to turn this down. We're going to turn this on. Interesting. These weren't even glow-in-the-dark paints. These were just regular folk art, and this was bright pink. So it glows. So I think when we come back again to do the next round, I will be going over the middle dots with some of this bright pink down here. And we'll see how that comes out. 
All right. Thank you for joining us. Remember to give us a thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. And leave us a comment. And have a blessed day.